Welcome to Digestion and Physiology, Series 5, Part 7. Trace Minerals, Copper. In the previous parts of this series, we have been focusing on the macro mineral component of the feed, that is, the minerals that are required in the daily diet in what is considered large quantities. In coming clips, we are going to focus on the trace mineral component within the feed. These are the minerals that are required in exceedingly small concentrations. They only need to be included in the diet in milligrams or micrograms per day. There are a lot of trace minerals, but we are only going to focus on the main ones relating to horse nutrition. There are seven main trace minerals, being copper, zinc, manganese, selenium, iodine, chromium and iron. Let's start with copper. Copper has many different roles. It is an enzyme activator or involved in enzyme reactions for reproduction, bone development, growth, connective tissue development for limb movement, coat and hoof conditioning, protection from metabolic oxidization, heart and central nervous system development, and immunocompetence, or the ability of the immune system to deal with threats and diseases. Copper is also very much involved in haemoglobin synthesis, or red blood cell formation. Most people think that iron is needed for red blood cell formation. In fact, nearly all horses have more than sufficient levels of iron in their body and the addition of more iron can lead to a toxic situation. Horses that are typically low in red blood cell counts are either suffering from some disease, parasite burden, or hemorrhaging, or they are actually deficient in copper, because copper is what is needed to mobilise the iron stores from the liver. If there is not enough copper in the diet, the iron that is stored in the liver cannot be released to form new red blood cells. Most times you will find a copper deficiency is the problem for a horse that is low in red blood cells, that is not hemorrhaging, diseased or carrying a heavy parasite load. Copper has low toxicity. Usually the liver regulates the amount that is stored there, but a high level of inclusion over a long period of time, so chronic poisoning, can lead to some severe liver damage. Occasionally, there's acute poisoning, which usually involves the heavy ingestion of some feed or plant that has a very high copper concentration. Feeds are quite variable in copper concentrations and often are affected by the soil status and the availability of the copper within the soil for the plant to be able to use. In Australia generally, most soils are very deficient in copper. Therefore, most plants are very deficient in copper. The absorption of copper is variable, but is generally low to medium. It is usually something around 15 to 20% of that eaten but can be as high as 40%. This is because the absorbance of copper is influenced by the concentrations of other minerals, like zinc, calcium, molybdenum and iron. It is also affected by infestation of internal parasites. Copper does accumulate in the liver of unborn foals, which is particularly important. Foals need to absorb these minerals before they are born, as there are minimal amounts of minerals in milk, and foals are dependent on that milk for the first two months of their life. Therefore, they must rely on the minerals accumulated in their liver whilst inside the mare's uterus. Additionally, it is worth mentioning that copper seems to play an important part in proper leg development in foals. Studies done in New Zealand and the United States showed that when brood mares on low copper diets were fed supplements containing high levels of copper prior to giving birth, the foals born had minimal leg issues 
from Developmental Orthopaedic Diseases, or DOD. When copper was fed to foals after they were born, there was no change in the occurrence of DOD in the foals, indicating it was important to feed the copper supplement to the mares in the last few months of the pregnancy. Some common symptoms of a copper deficiency in the horse include anemia, remember copper is needed to release the iron reserves from the liver to make more red blood cells, and bone disorders such as osteoporosis and osteochondrosis in the older horses and developmental orthopaedic diseases, DOD, in younger horses. Also, problems can occur with connective tissue in the back, resulting in a condition called swayback, causing a deep drop in the spine from behind the wither to the front of the rump. Other problems with copper deficiency include various cardiovascular disorders, heart diseases, and depigmentation or colour loss in the coat, lightening the coat colour and causing a rusty look to dark coloured horses. Defective keratinisation in the hooves is another symptom resulting in weak, brittle hooves. Diarrhoea is another possible symptom, especially when there's high levels of molybdenum in the diet. Infertility of mares and stallions and reduced growth of young horses are other problems. So your key takeaway points are Copper is necessary for many different, and very important, functions within the body, including reproduction, bone development, growth, connective tissue development, coat and hoof conditioning, protection from metabolic oxidisation, heart and central nervous system development, and immunocompetence. Copper is also needed to mobilise the iron stores from the liver and is therefore necessary for red blood cell formation. Copper has low toxicity, but chronic poisoning and subsequent liver damage can occur when fed at high levels over a long period. Plants in Australia are generally low in copper. Absorption of copper is generally low to medium. Copper supplementation to mares in the last few months of pregnancy can assist with leg development in the foal. There are many symptoms of copper deficiency including anemia, bone disorders, swayback, colour loss in the coat and brittle hooves to name just a few. In coming clips we are going to continue talking about each of the important trace minerals. Thank you for watching Equine Digestion and Physiology, Series 5, Part 7. If you like what you saw, please give us the thumbs up and share it with your friends. Connect to our website, our EQNC Facebook page and Instagram so as not to miss our next series.